Hey everybody, today's video is a little bit different. This is a video that I've been thinking about making for quite some time, but I'm finally going to make it right now. And this video has to do with collecting. And specifically, a lot of questions I get on my YouTube channel, um, questions like, or comments and questions rather, like, you know, how many copies of this particular album do you own? Or why do you have so many copies of this particular album? Or, you know, wouldn't it just be okay to have uh, a mono and a stereo pressing of said album? And basically, it got me thinking, you know, there are certain types of people, I'll call them collectors, and I will put myself in this category, um, that, you know, you love something so much that it causes this inner like drive to collect as many different types of things of this thing as you possibly can. And in this case, for me, it has to do with the Beatles and it has to do with uh, music, two things I love a lot. And so I wanted to make this video talking about, you know, my kind of my journey as to how I started collecting so many different versions of certain albums. And in this case, I'm going to be talking about Sgt. Pepper. Um, but just kind of how it all kind of started and maybe trying to explain, giving a little bit of an insight as to why I have so many different versions of just one particular album. So let's jump right into this. So we're going to talk just about Sgt. Pepper. So for me, Sgt. Pepper was an album that when I was just a little, little kid, my dad would play it all the time around the house. It was just a very, very popular album that he loved and that, of course, I learned to love. And I remember he had um, different versions of it. He had, a, had it on vinyl. He had the original um, Capitol uh, Stereo um, Rainbow Label of Sgt. Pepper. He had it on cassette tape. And we also had it on CD eventually, the, uh, from 1987, I believe, is when that CD came out. So that was my first exposure to Starsh and Pepper. And as you can probably tell, my first exposure to having one album on different formats. And even then, I thought it was really cool that he had this one album on record, CD, and tape. That just was really fascinating to me. And I also remember thinking that they sounded a little bit different, each of those. And that was my very first like baby step into, you know, sound and how uh, sound, how albums can sound different on different formats and with different mastering and all that kind of stuff. Of course, that was way beyond me at that time. But it got that spark going inside of me to pursue more and to search for more. And I guess actually, in the end, collect more. So I want to now show you a bunch of different versions I have here of Sgt. Pepper, and I've got a lot. And as I force myself to gather every single copy of Sgt. Pepper on any format at all, put it all in one spot, it did kind of alarm me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was kind of like, wow, I have a lot of Sgt. Pepper albums in my possession. And you know, the question is now, of course, when is or how many is too many, right? And I don't think there's an answer to that question. I don't think I have an answer to that question for myself. Um, I just know that I like to have a lot of different options and I like to hear different things. Now, I will say when it comes to my collecting, um, I do have certain rules for myself, rules that I didn't, I don't really think about all that much, but I know they exist. And those rules are, you know, I don't have... Um, multiple copies of something that sounds the exact same as something else. So like I don't have, you know, um, I don't have like three different versions of the 2009 digital remaster of Star Trek on CD. I just have this one because this sounds the same as all the other CDs because that's just how digital formats are. It's a digital file and it's going to sound the same. So. I wouldn't have another one because I'm all about the sound. That's what matters to me the most. And that is why I have so many different versions here. So let's jump right into this. And actually let's start with uh, Sgt. Pepper on tape. Now, um, what I have here is Sgt. Pepper on eight track tape. And this happens to be uh, on Capitol Records. 
And I don't know much about eight tracks, so um, I probably might be saying some some wrong information here. But I believe this eight track is from the uh, 1970s, like maybe like early to mid 1970s. I will get closer to show you. There it is. And I will admit right off the bat that I don't listen to this all that much. I do have an 8-track player, um, and maybe once or twice a year I will uh, take out the 8-track eight eight player, plug it into my stereo, and I will listen to certain 8-tracks that I have. I actually have acquired a lot of 8-tracks over time, a lot of Beatles 8-tracks, and they are very fun to listen to. And in this case, uh, this one, uh, like a lot of 8-tracks, has the songs in a different order, which is very interesting to me and which is justifies why I actually have this on 8-track. Uh, and for example, uh, the album starts with Sgt. Pepper, which is normal, and then it goes into Help My Friends, which is totally normal. But then it skips Lucy in the Sky, it skips Getting Better, and it goes right into Fixing a Hole, and then after that is Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite. And from there, it's all just jumbled up. Uh, in fact, to the point where the album doesn't even end with A Day in the Life, it ends with Sgt. Pepper reprise, and on this 8-track, the Sgt. Pepper reprise has been edited together to, uh, it loops a little bit, so it's a bit longer than we're used to hearing, and by the way, the edit is not very good, um, but it's just a very rare case where um, an actual official Beatles release was edited, um, and that's why collecting is so much fun. This is a great example, actually. I didn't even mean for this to be. This is a perfect example of why collecting so many different versions of a certain album, for me, is so fascinating because there's so many little different things that make it interesting. So that is the 8-track of Sgt. Pepper. We'll put this over here. Next up, this is a cassette tape of Sgt. Pepper. Let me get closer to show you this. And this was released in, I believe, like the late 1980s, maybe early 1990s. Um, and this is just another example of a different version of Sgt. Pepper that I actually really, really enjoy. This one has a bit more punch. There's a lot of compression going on on this cassette tape. Um, and I just find it a lot of fun to listen to. This is actually my latest uh, purchase of Sgt. Pepper. Um, I was never a collector of cassette tapes. Uh, and I'm kind of slowly kind of getting into it, just collecting Beatle cassette tapes, but I'm happy to have Sgt. Pepper on cassette. And actually, uh, the last time I listened to Sgt. Pepper was right here on this cassette tape. So there you go. So I don't have a reel-to-reel -reel, um, version of Sgt. Pepper. Uh, those are very hard to find and really expensive. And actually, my reel-to-reel -reel player has been acting up a lot lately. So I've kind of stopped collecting reel-to-reel uh, -reel, uh, tape. But I would like to eventually get Sgt. Pepper on Real Real. But I do have the next best thing, and it's from my friend Bert. My friend Bert, by the way, is this, uh, he's this fella that saw a lot of my YouTube videos and we uh, slowly became internet friends. And he started sending me a bunch of really, really cool stuff, including a lot of very cool Beatles uh, items. And this is one of the items that he sent me. And this is a CDR, uh, version of Sgt. Pepper, and this is from the Capitol uh, Reel to Reel uh, at uh, three and a three and three quarter uh, IPS. And I'll show you what this looks like. There's the back. And as you can see, this is a twofer, so you get Sgt. Pepper and you get Let It Be. Um, but so in kind of a weird way, I do have um, a version of the real to real version of Sar the US Sgt. Pepper, which is fun to listen to every once in a while. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have that. And as you will see, I will be showing you, I have a bunch of different CDRs uh, that Bertram has sent me uh, that have just different, you know, pressings with Sgt. Pepper, different formats of Sgt. Pepper, which I really like. Continuing along the CD path, uh, this one I just showed you, this is from the uh, black box set, the 2009 uh, digital remasters, stereo remasters. This is Sgt. Pepper. And uh, oddly enough, this is probably the one I listen to the least of all of my Sgt. Pepper collection. Um, but I do love to have it because it is a unique uh, 
version of Sgt. Pepper, of course, this remastered version. And I do like the packaging of this. I think they did a very good job with the packaging. It's got some cool artwork there. And uh, I just, I tend to leave this inside of the black box, you know, that long, uh, thin black box uh, of the Beatles digital remasters. And uh, yeah, so that's the 09 CD. And then this comes from the Mono box set released also in 2009. Uh, and this is of course the Mono Sgt. Pepper from that box set. And I love this one. This is the one if I'm gonna be uh, taking a long car trip in, in my car. In fact, my wife and I just celebrated our one year wedding anniversary. And because of the uh, kind of crazy times going on right now with the pandemic and all that, um, instead of going to Disneyland, which is what was going to be our plan, uh, we decided to just take a road trip up north. We drove up to a really nice beach that we like to go to. Actually, it's the beach that I proposed to her. Um, and we did a road trip up there, so we needed some music. And we listened to this very CD, this mono Sgt. Pepper. And uh, we both loved it. It sounded great. And when I want to listen to Sgt. Pepper on CD, this is the one I go to. So this is the Mono Sgt. Pepper from the Mono Box set. Carry on. Now this is probably going to be a long video. So fast forward or just leave now if you're not interested in checking out all these Sgt. Pepper versions. But uh, here we go. We're going to continue on. So this is the Sgt. Pepper box set that was released in uh, 2017, I believe. Yes. And of course, this has, uh, I forget how many CDs are in here. Uh, it's got four CDs um, with a bunch of, you know, the outtakes and it's got the, the Giles Martin uh, stereo remix. Uh, this also has um, the mono uh, Sgt. Pepper album on CD as well. And it's a little bit different than this one because it's uh, got a lot less compression um, and EQing and apparently it's just a direct transfer from the original mono master tape so it's very very cool so that's the mono or it's a Sgt. Pepper box set 2017 which I love and I love the book in here as well and I listen to this quite often so another one that I'm very very fond of when it comes to Sgt. Pepper let's put that over here hopefully it'll stay, stay up I don't know Bobby might come and knock it over um, and let's continue the CD extravaganza. So these are all CDs that were given to me by my friend Bertram. And these are all unofficial, by the way, but they're all very, very cool. So this CD is from the Audiophile Master Collection that I've, I made a whole video about this whole Audiophile Master Collection. Uh, and it's a very unique collection. And what this is, is basically someone took the mono Sgt. Pepper and turned it into fake stereo or I guess it is fake stereo, but they try to make a stereo mix from the mono and it's very, very interesting. So there's that, uh, Audiophile Sgt. Pepper, uh, Audiophile Master Collection. Then uh, this is a transfer, um, a needle drop, uh, Dr. Ebbets from the UK, an original UK uh, mono Sgt. Pepper, which is very cool to have. This is from uh, the Beatles rock band. Um, these are the Sgt. Pepper uh, multi-track remixes from the Beatles rock band where they were able to take all the uh, individual instruments and make a new mix. Fun to listen to. This is another Dr. Ebbets and this is a uh, another mono uh, needle drop from the Japanese uh, record of Sgt. Pepper. Here is another one, and this is another UK transfer. This is the a first pressing uh, stereo with um, a dash one dash one matrix. This is an all tube cut uh, needle drop. Of course, it's you know it's on t CD now, so it's completely digital, but still fun to listen to. Here comes Bobby, by the way. What are you doing? Uh, this uh, is. Let's see. I got to read the bottom here. This is a transfer from uh, the U.S. Capital Stereo LP uh, from 1977, the John LeMay uh, Master. And I actually have this one in my collection. This is one that I actually sent to him. Uh, and he then gave it back to me on CDR. So you will see that one coming up. Uh, this is a transfer from the EMI Apple Toshiba uh, Japanese Stereo Pressing of Sgt. Pepper. Very cool. Got the OB strip. 
And this is the mobile fidelity uh, transfer stereo, uh, half speed stereo, which is right there. Very cool. And another mobile fidelity. This is the UHQR uh, by Mobile Fidelity of Sgt. Pepper, which is actually a very, very cool sounding uh, version of Sgt. Pepper. I'll show you the back of this. Very, very cool. So those are all CDRs of just different needle drops and different um, versions of Sgt. Pepper on CD. So all ones I like very, very much. And I, by the way, I do listen to all those every once in a while. I've listened to every single one of those uh, and some of them I listen to more than others. Now, into the vinyl of Sgt. Pepper, or the records, rather. And I'm gonna go kind of quickly, th quickly through these and maybe talk a little bit about what I like about, what I don't like about these certain pressings, and uh, away we go. These are in no particular order. I just grabbed them from my record shelf. So here we go. Uh, this is a French pressing of Sgt. Pepper on the Odeon EMI label. This is in stereo. And I will get closer to show you the front and the back. And now, this does not sound very good. Um, it's an interesting one, interesting one to have. Uh, I'm happy to have it. And there's the inner bag there. Um, but oddly enough, it just doesn't sound all that great. I'll show you the label. It's on the green Apple label, and uh, yeah, it's an inter interesting one to have, but like, unfortunately, like a lot of the French pressings that I've heard, at least of the Beatles albums, it's just, it's just kind of lacking a lot of um, punch, a lot of clarity. I'm pretty sure they used like a second or third generation master tape that was probably sent to them by EMI, and it's just not all that great, um, but I like to have it in my collection, and it definitely sounds a little bit different, and it, of course, has the insert, I should say or I should show you. So that's the French pressing of Sgt. Pepper. Next up, this is, I believe, a German pressing. Yeah, this is a German pressing of Sgt. Pepper on the EMI Electrola uh, label. Uh, and it's actually on the Apple, green Apple label. Interesting thing about this one is that they, <laughs> for, the, for the center photo, you can tell they did like a scan of this because it actually has, it doesn't have the fold over flaps but you can see the fold over flaps in the scan that they did. And I'll get a little closer. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're there. And this is very flimsy like cardboard is how I would describe it. It's kind of like cheaply made. And the record is on the green Apple label again. And this is from, I think like 73, maybe 74, something somewhere around there. And this one, again, doesn't sound all that great either. It's very similar to the French uh, pressing, and it's kind of unusual for a German pressing um, for Beatles album to not sound that great because the revolver and the help from the exact same uh, year, uh, by the way, I put the record in the way I just did where it'll just slide out because this record is not in the best shape and I'm not too worried about it uh, slipping out. It stays in there all very, very good. But I know a lot of you are probably Think to yourself, why didn't he put that in there correctly? Just for the video to make it quicker. Anyway, doesn't sound all that great. It's very, um, sounds like a third or fourth generation tape and it's just kind of dull is how I would describe it. Now, here's another German pressing of Sgt. Pepper. This is on the Odeon label. And this one um, actually sounds pretty good. Um, and it's on, if I can get this out, it's on the blue Odeon label. And I believe this is from 1969. And it sounds pretty good. Um, it doesn't sound as good as obviously an original UK. And by the way, this is stereo as well. That was a stereo one as well. Um, doesn't sound as good as an original uh, UK pressing or like a late 60s or early 70s UK pressing, but it still sounds pretty good uh, for a uh, German pressing of a Beatles album. And again, uh, the cool thing about this one is that it does have the fold down flaps right there and right there, which I think this other one scanned a version of this and that's how they got those weird flaps on there. So, and this one has an original sticker on there, the Orzu sticker right there. 
And uh, yeah, so a German pressing with Sgt. Pepper from the late 60s. Moving on, what is this? I gotta check it out. Okay, this is a, a UK pressing of Sgt. Pepper, and I think it is on, yeah. This is my favorite pressing Sgt. Pepper that I own. This is a stereo pressing uh, that is an early, or actually it's late 1969, maybe 1970, on the Parlophone label there. Sounds great. Uh, this is made from the original stereo master tape, um, cut completely with an all analog signal. It's got all the good stuff going for it, and it's, yeah, my favorite way to listen to Sgt. Pepper in stereo on vinyl. This one right here. UK stereo pressing. Moving on here. Uh, let's see, what is this? We're going way out of order. Oh, this is um, this is the mono uh, Sgt. Pepper album that was released in 2014, the mono remaster, and I love this one. Uh, this is getting harder and harder to find. Um, it's just really, really great. Bobby agrees. Here comes Bobby. He's going to come look at all these records. Moving on. Uh, this is Sgt. Pepper from the uh, 2012 uh, stereo box sets. So this is a digital re digital remaster, and this is one that was um, printed in the USA. And then I have one that is printed uh, was pressed rather in Germany. Uh, same exact album from the same digital uh, remasters from 2009, but sound a little bit different because this is made in the USA and this one was made in Germany and the one in Germany I think beats out the one in the USA just in the sense of seems to just just be a little bit better uh, to my ears and but both are really great so those are the new Sgt. Pepper albums that I have there moving on this is the 2017 uh, Giles Martin stereo remix for Sgt. Pepper and this one is the double LP version where it's got uh, an extra disc of um, the outtakes from Sgt. Pepper. And this is another one that I really love to listen to. It sounds really, really good. Now we're getting into the US pressings of Sgt. Pepper. This is uh, on the Capital, uh, I think Purple Label. Yep, Capital Purple Label, as you can see there. I'm gonna go a lot faster through these. Uh, this one sounds pretty good. I think this is a, um, a Wally pressing, um, who is the cutting engineer. Uh, this is another Capital pressing. This is on the, oddly enough, Capital, Parlophone, and Apple label all on the back there. You can see. Kind of interesting. And this is from the 1990s or late 80s, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, but again, this is on the Capital Purple label. And this was taken from the uh, digital, um, digital remaster done in 1987. So this is a digital version of the album pressed to vinyl and it's interesting in its own right again sounds quite different from all the other sergeant peppers you've ever heard then we have another uh capital version of sergeant pepper this happens to be the stereo pressing and i think this is on the rainbow label with the original inner sleeve yes this is on the rainbow label and if i'm going to listen to Sgt. Pepper, I do enjoy listening to this sometimes, the US version on the rainbow label. And this is, as you can tell, not in the best shape, but that's okay. Uh, but this is, by the way, the record that I heard probably for the first time ever hearing Sgt. Pepper uh, because this is the one that my dad had. And I obviously fell in love with the album right away. So Sgt. Pepper, stereo, capital, this is another Sgt. Pepper. Uh, this is the mono um, Capitol Records version of Sgt. Pepper on the rainbow label again. Again with another original inner sleeve. And there is the mono record. And always fun to hear the mono mix of Sgt. Pepper. And if you haven't heard it, you should definitely listen to it because it's, it's just so great. And uh, again, this one comes with the cutouts which are always fun to have in there put those back in there and we're getting down to the last two here uh this is another um uh, mono of the uh, sgt pepper album the u.s capital mono and i don't exactly know why i have this one there must be something different about this one i think it's from a different pressing plant 
I, yeah, this might be the Scranton plant, and the other one might be the um, Jacksonville. Not sure exactly, but there's a difference there. And of course, as I always talk about on this website, when it comes to records, every single record that's been pressed, and of course they all have been pressed, uh, they all sound different from, from each other. They all have unique attributes that you know the other one doesn't have from the other one. That's why collecting records is so much fun. Last but not least, this is probably the weirdest Sgt. Pepper album that I have. Um, and this was given to me by my friend Bertram. And this is a Russian Sgt. Pepper album released, I believe, in like 1991. And I've talked about this one before, but it comes with Revolver. <laughs> so it's a double album. You get Sgt. Pepper and you get Revolver. And um, someone has altered the cover uh, of the Sgt. Pepper one uh, to include different people in the collage. And uh, they changed the Sgt. Pepper drum head, of course. And maybe I'll show you that again. Just kind of a cool little novelty uh, Sgt. Pepper to have. So those are all of my Sgt. Pepper albums, all put together, all shown in one video. Uh, and it's a lot. And uh, it just, now it comes to the question of, do I listen to all of these? Uh, Yes, I do actually. And uh, do I listen to all of them consistently? No, I don't. But there are times where I want to listen to Sgt. Pepper and maybe I want to listen to, uh, I want to listen to the mono mix of Sgt. Pepper, but I don't want to listen to it on vinyl. I want to listen to it on CD. So I pull out the mono box set, listen to it on CD. It sounds great. Maybe I want to listen to a different version of the mono uh, mix on CD. Well, then I pull out the box set and listen to that one because that one doesn't have quite as much EQ. It's apparently a direct transfer from the original mono master tape. Maybe sometimes I want to hear Sgt. Pepper with a little bit more punch and uh, just have it play on tape. I listen to the cassette tape. Put that on. Enjoy that. Uh, maybe I want to listen to um, a specific needle drop of a, of a vinyl version of Sgt. Pepper that I don't have. Uh, and then maybe in this case, it's the uh, UHRQ version of Sgt. Pepper. So I'll listen to this CDR of the needle drop of that album. Fun to do. Or the, uh, the other mobile fidelity version of Sgt. Pepper. So it's just fun to be able to listen to any different version of Sgt. Pepper that I want to at any time. And that's what I love about collecting. And that's what I love about collecting Beatles albums. Because there are so many different options out there when it comes to the Beatles and when it comes to uh, records in general for any artist, there are just so many endless, endless versions um, that you can just collect. So for example, I don't know how many, I didn't count how many different versions are here, but there are still so many other versions uh, that I just don't have on different formats, um, different pressings of vinyl, and I will always be collecting Sgt. Pepper and Beatles albums and other albums I love by different artists. Um, forever because it's so much fun to do and uh, yeah so I hope this video was entertaining and I would love to know in the comments below what you think about when uh, when it comes to collecting uh, when is too much too much um, is or is it never enough uh, probably in my case I guess it's never enough um, but I would love to know in the comments below your opinion on this whole idea of collecting multiple versions of one specific album or artist and uh, that's it for now. So make sure, by the way, to go check out my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com. Lots of records on there. If you're looking for a particular great sounding pressing of an album, I probably have it on the website. So go check that out. Stay tuned. Lots of records coming uh, to the website as well. Lots more videos coming. And uh, that's it for now. So uh, take care and bye for now.